Hey everyone, Professor August here, and today we're going to be talking about this little book, Sarah by J.T. Leroy. Uh, J.T. Leroy is the nom de plume of Laura Albert. I first read this book 20 years ago when I was in college, and the edition that I had was this first one from 2000. And I remember when I first read it, I know it's really hard to believe that I'm that old, but yes, I am. When I first read it, I thought it was a story that was really tragic and it just stuck with me. And then I got this reprint from 2016, and I just had this desire to see if my worldview has changed and if I still read the story the same way. And honestly, I do. Uh, a lot of the same themes are the same things that struck me when I was in college. The issue of gender identity and belonging and wanting a better life and making naive decisions. All of those things were things that I thought about in college. And now 20 years later, I'm still thinking about the same things. And so I was really glad to come back to this novel, uh, you know, a little bit later in life just to revisit it. And so I think it's worth a read. Uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think after I've told you about the plot and the characters and whether or not it's an easy read or not. So the plot of the book is really easy to follow. It's 120-ish pages, so it's a quick read. Uh, and there are two major settings. We have the Doves, which is a higher-end, nicer truck stop with a really nice restaurant. And then we have the Three Crutches, which... Uh, is the second setting, and it's less nice than The Doves. Uh, it's a little shadier, it's more on the outskirts of West Virginia, uh, and it reads that way. Uh, it's not it's not the greatest place to be. The book opens up with the narrator receiving a small raccoon penis bone from Glad. Glad is their pimp, and the significance of the raccoon bone is sort of ownership from the pimp uh, towards the ladies who work at this truck stop, uh, and each of them has a penis bone for themselves. And the narrator, who's a 12-year-old boy, but for most of the book is a girl, uh, receives this bone and decides that they want to get a larger one because the larger the bone, the more experienced and favored they are in the eyes of their pimp. And so Glad, the, the pimp, is a really nice guy. We'll talk about him a, a little bit later. But she decides, the narrator, that she is going to become the best lot lizard, to become the best sex worker. Early on in the book, the mother uh, disappears and goes away. And it's through this that Sarah, the narrator, starts making naive decisions, um, decisions that you can read as a 12-year-old. These are things that don't really make sense for adults. But as a child, these are decisions they would make. So she decides that she's going to run away uh, to go to a different truck stop and get hired and make a lot of money and become really famous as the best uh, lot lizard of them all. So one day she decides to leave the Doves and she ends up meeting Pooh at this place called the Jackalope. And the Jackalope is sort of this um, mystical site that sex workers go to to gain uh, favor and become better at their jobs. And uh, so Sarah is there, she meets Pooh in line, and she kind of believes that Pooh is going to become her friend. And Pooh's pimp, Leloup, comes into the picture and decides to hire Sarah. And so they all go back to the Three Crutches, where Sarah is now hired as a girl of the night. Uh, but Leloup protects her because Leloup is really taken with her and doesn't want her to be touched and is really protective of her. But over time, we realize that Leloup is really, uh, like his protection comes from a violent place. Uh, he doesn't have the best interest of the people around him at heart. And Sarah is used to become this sort of mystical figure at the Three Crutches. And Leloup starts selling tickets uh, to come and see Saint Sarah. And Sarah takes advantage of this and starts performing these sort of miraculous things of, you know, body shakes and putting her hand on the hearts and mind and heads of these truckers who are coming to see her. But then over time, her mystique fades away and Leloup just sort of stops that attraction where people come to see her and puts cages on her windows and prevents her from going outside. And so she starts to decide or she makes the decision that she's going to confide in Pooh to leave. And it's at this point that we start seeing her world falling apart because Sarah is then taken to this character named Lyman and Lyman is one of the line cooks uh, at the Three Crutches and he is a pedophile and he does something to Sarah which um, is kind of violent and it's in its act and it's in that scene towards it's like the third last third of the book where we see this violent action take place and the discovery is made that Sarah isn't actually a little girl but a little boy and uh, so the tragedy of the story itself sort of unravels uh, in, uh, in that portion of the book. 
the characters really do make up this book. The namesake of the book is Sarah, and that is the mother of the narrator, but she doesn't really appear that much in the book. Uh, she sort of disappears after the first section of the book. She finds a trick and they go off and we don't really see her at all in the rest of the book. She does pop up here and there uh, through reference because the narrator is trying to aspire to be like her. And so we get the mother as a character appearing once in a while. The main character is an unnamed 12-year-old who is a boy, but throughout most of the book uh, appears as a girl. And the character chooses the name Sarah based off of their mom to refer to themselves. And there are other names that are attributed to this character. So uh, Cherry Vanilla is one, Shira is another, Saint Sarah is another. And towards the middle end of the book, we get Sam uh, because the character is revealed to not be a girl and to be a boy. And so this character really is, uh, I would say, brave for a 12-year-old because the character makes a lot of naive decisions. Um, the book starts off with the character wanting to become like their mom and become a lot lizard and become really good at it and get the biggest raccoon penis bone that any of the girls have. And so through this ambitious desire to become better makes a lot of really naive decisions, which is what drives a lot of the plot forward. Um, the character is very intuitive and very insightful and is observant of their surroundings. So a lot of what we're seeing in the book comes to us through what this narrator tells us. And so I think even though the dialogue itself is not necessarily what a 12 year old would be telling us, the way that it's portrayed uh, I, as sort of naive decisions that are made rings true for a 12 year old. There are two main pimps in the book. We have Glad, which the book opens with, and we have Leloup, who is introduced in the second setting. So the first setting is the Doves, which is the truck stop, and Glad is the pimp that runs that truck stop and has ladies working for him. And Glad is sort of the virtuous pimp and uh, the saintly version of a pimp. He's really kind. He takes care of the people who work around him. Leloup, on the other hand, is the sinner and treats the people he works with uh, harmfully, he harms them, he takes their money, he doesn't treat them equally. And so you really do have this dichotomy between good and evil, sinner and saint between these two characters. There are two other characters that I think are really important to mention, and one of them is Lyman. Lyman is a cook at the Three Crutches, and he is for lack of a better word, a pedophile, and he really likes young little girls. And so as soon as he meets Sarah, he is taken with her and just wants to be with her. And there's a scene in the book that's kind of difficult to read through. Um, and that's a scene where he discovers that Sarah is actually a boy. And because of that revelation, Sarah then is forced to become Sam. Her hair is chopped off violently. Uh, and then she's put into a um, enclave of boy prostitutes in the back of the three crutches. So we start seeing a turn in the events and Lyman has a lot to do with this. Lyman has uh, a little storyline for himself, which I do think, I'm not going to uh, ruin it here, but he has what's coming to him um, towards the end of the book. The last character I want to mention is Pooh. Pooh is a young girl who works with Sarah at the Three Crutches. She's also uh, one of the young ladies of the night. And Pooh is really aggressive and makes a lot of decisions that tend to harm Sarah, but Sarah, from her perspective, sees Pooh as an ally, and it's a lot of this naive approach towards Pooh that leads Sarah down a critical path that um, reveals her as a boy. And so uh, Pooh, as a character, we can read her as sort of the jealous type, um, the young girl who is unable to create sisterhood, because in her attempt to be the sole focus of the loop, uh, she truly does harm Sarah in um, the decisions that she makes. There are a number of other characters that are fantastic in the book that uh, deserve attention, but just to sort of keep this review short, um, I'll say that the dialogue between them is really great. A lot of them sort of become mother figures or older sister figures to Sarah, and they, and they take care of her. Um, the dialogue between them is really good. It's fast-paced and rapid, and you can really tell that there's um, an interaction of family, especially the characters who work at the Doves. They treat each other like a family. Uh, the characters that work at the Three Crutches, they're also... Uh, they have their own thing going on. They know how to decipher the codes that Leloup has. They uh, know how to interact with each other. But each of them, I think, is worth reading about. 
So how easy is this book to read? Well, yes, it is easy, and no, it's not easy. So I'm going to parse this a little bit and say, yes, the process of reading is really easy. The experience might be difficult for some people, and I'll explain that in a second. Process, easy as any other book. So it is straightforward. The The language is on point, as you would expect from a piece of literature. The turns of phrases are great. The dialogue between the characters is really good. Uh, and there isn't much in terms of jargon that's used that you wouldn't be able to understand. There are certain phrases like lot lizard that you're, you'll figure out in uh, the context of the book, but there's nothing really in there that is difficult uh, in terms of the reading itself. The experience, though, I'm going to use a word here, might be triggering for some people. And so the reason I say that the experience might be difficult as a read is because the themes that we're covering in this book are things like queerness and the binary between male and female, girl and boy, uh, gender fluidity. And so those things become really apparent towards the middle and end of this book, and they might start bringing up certain emotions for people. In addition to the gender aspect, there are themes of uh, gender exploitation, uh, financial exploitation, human trafficking, violence. Some of it could be uh, argued as domestic violence, uh, issues of abandonment and greed and aspirations for better life. Uh, better life. And so all of these things uh, are thematic, and so they might be harder for certain people to read. But overall, I think the book is fantastic. And so when I weigh the two things against one another, I tend to lean towards it being a much easier read than one might expect. It's pretty short, so you'll be able to do this in like one or two sittings. I'd read it before, but it was a long time ago. So this time when I read it, I did it in two, set, two sittings, and I had no problem getting through it. Um, I'm really curious to see what other people think of it. And so I've linked the book uh, in the description box. This is not paid advertisement. I do not get a cut of this, but I do think it's worth your time. Uh, so I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Catch you in the next video.